Today, I'm going to take a look at the new Synect sound wire. Dave, who made the sound bullet here from Synect Audio, and he's come out with a new product that I'm super excited to check out and test. A USB-C to XLR, and it's pretty long. Let's measure it out at six and 10. And it comes with a USB-C to USB. Why would we spend $200 or so on this versus this here that I got on Amazon? USB, this did not come with the adapter. You get the, have to come up with your own adapter, USB-C to dual XLR. Why would we even do that when we could get one of these Apple USB-C to stereo mini plug. And then for not very much money, we could use a mini plug to dual XLR and then have our own adapter. And finally, one here, which is actually two USB-C to mini plug. And it was like seven bucks. Plus we have the mini plug out on the computer or laptop itself. Um, so we have all these options. Why would we care? Is it really, is it really worth it? Does it matter? What are the differences? So I'm gonna take a look at a few different things. I've got a Duro meter here, which will give us the output levels. I've got a scope hooked up and I've got two inputs on the Tektronix scope. One of them is for pin two, the other is for pin three, and then the red trace will be the difference between two and three. So we'll be able to see if these are balanced or unbalanced lines. If we have three squiggles, it's balanced. If we get two squiggles, then we have an unbalanced line. One hot, one ground, and then the difference between hot and ground gives us the red line. I've also got a little mixing board here that uh, we'll use at the end of the test where we'll check phantom power. See what it does. What happens if you phantom into these units? All right, so we're gonna kind of look at frequency response, output level type. We'll look at noise and we'll look at phantom power. So let's start with the very first thing, the least expensive, and I'll just plug into the mini plug output. We'll run this into this wire here. This black one will go show up left on the duro meter and this here will show up onto our scope. Next thing, I'm going to fire up a reference tone. We'll do a 100 hertz sine wave. And there we go. Okay, so coming out of the mini plug, we have an unbalanced line. We've got the yellow line, which is pin three. We've got the blue line, which is pin two. And we've got the red, which is the difference. And there's our unbalanced output. So there we go. That's what we have at 100 hertz. Let's go ahead and go up higher. We'll go to 500 and similar thing. Let's get up into, let's go up to 10K. Looking pretty good. Uh, let's go up to 15K. And we can see our level hasn't changed much, uh, which is a good sign. We don't want this to drop. Let's go to 20K. And we're still looking pretty good. It's uh, looking very good. No issues, full level. Let's see how high we can go. So I'm gonna start going through these. We'll go to say 22K. And we're getting a little fuzzy on these lines here. That means we're probably getting up around that Nyquist frequency. Let's go to 24K. And we got nothing. Okay, so that's um, as high as we're getting out of the headphone jack on this laptop. Let's go ahead and try another unit. Little um, one that we got two for $7. And let's go ahead and we'll go through this quicker. We'll try 15K and there we have it. And it's looking a little fuzzy. Let's go to 20K and 22K. It's dropping off, 24K. So. This is, again, back to 20K, it's an unbalanced signal and it drops off at 22K. Since this is a USB and there's a little digital audio converter in there, there should be a setting for this. And we can see here it's 16-bit 48K, which means it should make it up to 24K, it made it up to 22-ish. There's no drop down, we're locked into that. All right, so let's go to the Apple one. Okay, now here we have a drop down, two channel 24 bit 48K, but we have other lower resolutions, a 16 bit 48K, 24 bit 44.1. We'll leave it at the highest resolution, studio quality. And we'll hit OK. So we should have 20K, no problem. We'll try it. 
and it looks good. Let's try 22K, 24K, and it's gone. All right, so these things are all about the same. Let's go on to USB Direct 2 and see if we get any advantage from that. Now we have an all-in-one unit. Um, we'll start with the settings. Okay, here we're stuck in a 16-bit 48K like we were with the less, least expensive one. Let's go ahead and give that a try. We can kind of predict what's going to happen. It's going to do 20K. Oh, well, look at that. It does not like to do 20K. It's already mangled. Let's go down to 15K. That's even mangled. That's kind of messy looking. Let's try 12K. That's even mangled. Let's try 100 Hertz. All right, well, that works. Let's try 12K. That's mangled. Okay, so this unit is distorting at like 10K. It's... um not looking good at all. This is not going to sound good. This is junk. Uh, surprisingly bad. I'm not going to go any farther on that. That's worse than um, the two for seven dollars, but you do get the XLR connectors with it. So for 29 or 25 to 29 bucks. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the sound wire settings. Here we have Look at this array of settings. It starts with 16-bit 441K and it goes all the way up to 32-bit 384K studio quality. Now, I believe that's higher resolution than they even advertise. I thought it was a 192 device. I'm going to crank it all the way up. Let's use this in its full capacity. Why not? Okay, we'll do 10K and... Okay, so check that out. We've got a balanced line. See how we can see channel one and channel two and they're out of polarity with each other. And then the difference between the two as the red line. We have the same output level as we did before with everything turned up all the way. I've got the maximum volume computer set for all of them. Balance line is good. Let's go and see how high we can go. 24K where it all crapped out on the other ones. Not a problem, let's try 30K. That looks good. Does it, can it go to 40K? <laughs> All right, 50K, 50,000 cycles. All right, let's go to I don't, 100K. I don't know why we'd need 100K, but this adapter will put out 100K audio. What about 200K? There's no way. Okay, didn't think so. Let's try 150K. Whoa, check that out. Now the meter is still reading it too. Now, I don't know if this meter is rolling off. We're not seeing a drop in volume here, I don't think. Let's go back to 30K and see what our levels are. Yeah, it's not even dropping off. We can see that these, uh, the, the magnitude of the red line there, and then we go to 150K. It's not even rolling off. Okay, let's try 170, 180, 190. There it is. Okay, so 190K. Damn, we almost made it to 200. Wow. All right, well, that's cool. High frequency response is stellar. If something can go, if a car can go 120 miles an hour, then you're definitely going to be able to be fine at 60. Having something that goes at least an octave above where you're going to use it is awesome. This thing here at, goes 10 octaves above, maybe a little more than we need, but definitely very cool instead of dying out before we get there. All right, so there's frequency response. Let's go ahead and take a look at noise. So for noise, uh, let's do something a little different. And this will be the cheapest of the little USB ones. All right, so let's check out noise and hear it. Now it's showing up in the um, recording and then we'll leave that set the same for everything. Uh, let's go check the noise in the other ones. And we'll go to the Apple. Yeah, I got some garbage there. Let's compare that. Now, that noise is uh, meaningful in reference to a main signal, but what we're really doing is looking at the noise versus each other. Let's go ahead and try this guy here. You know, they said it goes 20 to 20K, and I would not say that was a 20K success there. And yeah, let's give it a listen. Well, that's impressive. 
in an undesirable way. It made those other ones sound good, and those things didn't sound very good to me. Now, I am gaining this up quite a bit, so we're going to know where we sit once I put this in with all of this gain. This is looking pretty reasonable. Let's hear it. What the heck? Check that out. I mean, that is an order of magnitude difference. All right, well, that's fascinating. Uh, we checked out high frequency response. We checked out noise. We checked out line balancing. The blue Synect unit is the only balanced line of the bunch. It's the lowest noise of the bunch, and it's got a frequency response higher than anything else. Now, there is something unique about it in that it has actual transformers in it. So the transformers are going to give it wonderful isolation and prevent it from having phantom power issues. But also transformers do struggle with low frequency. So let's go ahead and take a look at low frequency response. And for that, I'm going to use a 20 hertz tone. I will turn it down a little bit. So I'm going to go to 50% level. And there's our uh, low frequency tone. And then I'm going to bring this up to a higher level. And we should see some distortion. There we go. Yeah, we're hitting, we're distorting the waveform when we drive the output hard, the transformer overloads. Let's go ahead and set this down where it stops overloading. The frequency response on the low end should be very good, but it's not going to take as much level. You might not want to set your output levels at full blast if you don't have to, if you don't need the gain. Turn it down. Let's turn it up. So we even on the crappy one, we're not seeing an overload at 85%. Let's go ahead and see what the other ones look like on the low end. So there's our 20 hertz. Let's go ahead and check our levels here. Uh, we're not seeing any distortion. So one of the advantages of not having the transformers is you can drive it harder on the low frequencies without it distorting. So you might want to turn it down with the sound wire and not run your laptop full blast. For our last test, we're going to check phantom powers. Okay, there's our 100 cycle tone. Turn on phantom power and see what happens. Still works. But now phantom power turned on in the console slowly ramps it up. Let's go ahead and jolt it. So you just plug it in something hot. And this adapter handles phantom power. Let's see what the Apple one does. See if it likes it. We'll plug it in hot. It's working so far. It mutes a little bit, but it comes back. So it doesn't seem to be bothered by phantom power. This is good news. Interesting. Never realized that happened. All right, let's go ahead and try this wonderfully inexpensive cable here that really kind of surprised me at how bad it was. And we'll turn phantom power off. Well, there's something interesting. Phantom power actually makes it quieter. When I turn phantom power on, it goes down in volume and it stays down in volume. We should be able to see that here. Oh, that's weird. I think I blew up one half of this thing. Yeah, we no longer have both sides working. And this thing is hot, 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 hot. All right. Yeah, this no longer works. Let's try this one. All right, so I used phantom power and I managed to blow up a DAC blew up one side of this. This is hot and only one side's working. This thing was vulnerable. 
All right, so let's go ahead and check the sound wire for phantom power vulnerabilities and such. So what I'm going to do is phantom is live there and we'll hot patch these XLRs. And um, what you may notice is it doesn't have that huge pop like it did with the other ones. A transformer ISO, because of the way a transformer is, pins two and three have a coil of wire between them. And when you energize, it energizes both of them. On those unbalanced, it's dragging that phantom power down, whereas this allows the phantom power to stay at 48 volts. And so we don't get that 48 volt pop. So you don't get a huge boom, which is great. I'm not worried about it blowing out. I mean, transformers are impervious to phantom. They're designed uh, to deal with phantom or phantom was designed to deal with transformers. So the sound wire is really impressive. I compared a bunch of different cable, four different cable type uh, adapters to go from USB to XLR. This was the only balanced one I compared. Actually, the only one I know of that is in a separate box. And the boxes are kind of a bummer. I mean, that's not as portable, more weight, more crap to deal with. You got a cable going to the box or from the box. And, you know, it's just more stuff. This is a one piece solution and fully balanced and phantom power impervious. This is a truly pro way of getting into a computer. You know, the mismatch between computer technology and pro audio technology where we have, you know, DI boxes and transformers and high levels and all kinds of stuff. And then computers, which have a whole different fundamental and we're trying to tie those two together. Cool stuff. I like this a lot for a high fidelity or high frequency response product. I'm excited to use it in the field and test it more. Let me know what you think. Awesome.